In part two of putting your cover file together in InDesign to make up a print book cover, we're going to put in a few pictures, a coloured shape and some text. Really, what we did last week in a slightly different way. To begin with, click on the rectangle frame tool, click right up at the top of the bleed and then click and drag down to the bottom right on that front page rectangle. And then use the black arrow, click on the black arrow just to adjust the picture box in case it's not quite right. Make sure it's right on the lines. Then go to File and Place, as we did last week. Find the image that you want to use. Remember, for print, it's got to be CMYK. And then click Open when you're ready. And in it goes. To fit it, remember to click or right click, find Fitting, and then go Fit Content Proportionally. Now, you'll see when you do this, it's not quite on the uh, edge of the cover. So click on the white arrow this time, click on the image and you'll see this black activation node, uh, sorry, brown activation node and brown line that you can then click on the image itself without affecting the picture box to adjust it. Now we're going to put in the colored shape for the back cover and this is pretty easy to do. But before we do that, I'm going to switch to high quality display just in case your image isn't looking all that great. So go to the rectangle tool, click on that. This is to put in the block of color. Go right out to the edge of the bleed, not the edge of the page, the edge of the bleed. Click and drag right across the back cover and the spine for this example. Then in swatches, you can click any of the colors that you would like. I'm going to suggest today a pale blue. The swatches, of course, you can get via the window color menu or they may be on the right. I'm clicking on blue. Now, the reason why it filled up is because I'm on fill. See where fill is here on the, the toolbox and then up here on the actual swatches palette, it's there as well. If you're on stroke, which is like border, the other option, then it will do the edge, not the fill. So I'm going to save this for the moment just because we've done a fair bit of work and I don't want to lose it. Uh, so I'm just going to give it a name. Click Save. All right, now continuing on, we've got most of our back cover now. We need to look at uh, text. So click on the Type tool, click and drag a text box. We're going to do the title of the book. And I'm going to suggest Bondi Lifeguards as a title, something pretty obvious. Uh, well, it may, may not be obvious if you don't know that's a Bondi Lifeguard, but uh, highlight it and then go up to where the options are for the size of the font. Uh, change the font as well to whatever you want. I'm going to choose Calibri or Calibri and uh, then once that's done, perhaps go and choose a color if other swatches. OK, that's how you change color of a text. And then I'm just going to click enter so it's on different lines. Highlight and center using the alignment. Now here's something I suggest you try just so you know the controls there. Highlight the text then go up to where it says type and click on character to get the character palette. You can just click on the top of the box and drag it. The top right, top right, click and you get the option for small caps. Have a look. OK, maybe you like that, maybe you don't, but I want you to know that that option's there. Go back to the type tool and then click and drag another text box and we're going to make the or put in the author's name. Just put in your own name for the hell of it this time and then highlight it and really just repeat what we've done. Uh, I'm going to make it a little bit bigger, change the typeface to uh, Calibri, Calibri, whatever you want to call it, tomato, tomato. There we go. And I'm just going to leave it as the black color. That's a pretty good contrast with the background. Now, if you want to see it without all those guidelines there, go down to the bottom of the toolbox, click on preview, and there you can actually get rid of all the guidelines and say, well, that's what it looks like. So those guidelines are not going to print, but they help you lay out things. So go back to normal. And now let's have a look at putting on the back cover a barcode. Now, you don't have to do this at this stage, but I would like it in your major project. Click and drag the rectangle frame tool to create a picture box. Go file and place. Here's one I prepared earlier, a barcode. You can just Google one of these. Make sure it's got an ISBN at the top. And there it is. I've put it in. I'm, I'm not even going to bother fitting that. I'm just going to leave it as it is and create another image box this time for the logo. It's good if you can create your own logo. Uh, it takes a little bit of time, but it's worthwhile doing. Here's the Overdog Press logo. 
go. I'm going to right click to get fitting and fit, fit content proportionally. Okay, so it's really beginning to look like the back cover of a book. Now we need to click and drag a text box to put in the back cover blurb. And that's actually what they call it in the industry. They actually just call it a blurb. You can call it back cover copy. So to get that, uh, open the file where it is. I've got a Microsoft Word file here with a blurb in it. And the nice thing is you can just highlight it and then I'm hitting Control C for copy. And then I'm going to paste it in directly into the InDesign document. And you'll see in a second that it's going to go straight in, which is a nice feature. I've, I'll do the visual thing and do it via edit and paste. So you can see that's what I'm doing. And there it is. There's all the text. So. For this cover, you can just put in some nonsense for now. But when you do the, the project itself, do it for real. It's really important to have a great back cover blurb. I'm highlighting the text at the top, making it yellow with a swatch. Then I'm going to change it to Calibri and Calibri regular. I uh, press the C key there to get straight to that uh, listing of the uh, typefaces. Then I'm uh, going to highlight this. And another trick I'd like you to look at, type and go to the paragraph selection, you get this paragraph palette. Now I'm going to put some space between the paragraphs by clicking on the space underneath option. So I'm just increasing it there. You can put space above as well as if you like, but uh, I'm putting it below. Uh, then I'm going to do a few more adjustments to the text. I'm just sort of looking at the placement here and uh, just a bit of a play with it. I think I might make that white by clicking on the paper option and the swatches. Now I'm going to make the text above a little bit bigger. And how's it looking now? Well, I'm doing a save. So I've done a fair bit of work that I don't want to lose. Uh, I could look at the preview, but I think I'll just click on the black arrow and adjust where the box sits with all the text in it. Now I'm going to highlight these three paragraphs to get rid of the hyphenation. See the bottom left of the paragraph palette? Just click in there to get rid of the hyphens. Then I'm going to do left justify so it looks more like a book. Okay, that alignment's a bit better. I'll fix up the critics, supposed critics quotes below and just make them look a bit, a little bit better. Now here's a trick if you uh, want to use italics and you'll see that this particular font only offers regular or the typeface only offers a regular font. See this angled button here, you can actually angle the regular font so it's a kind of simulated italic. Most of you won't need that but it's kind of a handy trick to know. Now once again save it and that's pretty much our book finished. We just need to uh, then export it as a press quality PDF. PDF. So file the presets and choose the Adobe PDF print and save. Now go straight to marks and bleeds. There's only one thing we need to change here from the defaults and that is you've got to check use document bleed settings. So it, your file will include that three millimeter bleed. If you don't do that before you hit export, you'll be in trouble. Please remember to get that button and everything will be all right. Now I'm just trying to quit out of this and it's saying, do you want to save it? Yeah, okay. And that other window that pops up, you can ignore that. I'm going to open the PDF and just show you what it looks like. Uh, it's going to be really what we saw on screen, but it's going to be this time in Adobe Acrobat DC. There it is. That is a file ready to upload to Lulu. Of course, you can make it larger or smaller, whichever way you like, and you're done.